In this video we share Jesus' descent into hell from a vision of blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. The miraculous vision of the blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich on Jesus' descent over hell. When Jesus, with a loud cry, released his most holy soul, I saw him descend into the earth in the form of light, with many angels, including Gabriel, at the foot of the cross. I saw, however, that his divinity remained united with both his soul and his body on the cross. I can't explain how that happened. I saw the place where the soul of Jesus went divided into three parts, like three worlds, and it seemed to me that they were round, and that each part was separated from the other by one hemisphere. In front of the foreground was a bright space, so to speak, bright and greenish. It was the space I always see souls free from purgatory enter before they are taken to heaven. The pre-hell, which housed those awaiting redemption, was shrouded in a grey, hazy hemisphere and divided into several circles. The Saviour, all in light, and led by angels as in triumph, passed through two circles, the left of which surrounded the forefathers to Abraham, and the right the souls from Abraham to John the Baptist. Jesus went through both circles, and they did not yet recognize him, but everything was filled with joy and longing, and it was as if these anxious, cramped spaces were opening up to longing. It permeated and refreshed them, like air, like light, like the dew of redemption, and it was all as fast as a gust of wind. The Lord, however, passed between these two circles into a misty space, where Adam and Eve, the first parents, were. He spoke to them, and they honored him with unspeakable delight. Now the procession of the Lord, accompanied by the first pair of men, entered to the left of the forefathers who lived before Abraham. This area was a kind of purgatory, because among them there were still some evil spirits who tortured and frightened some of these souls in various ways. The angels knocked and ordered it to open, because here was the entrance, the door, they knocked to announce the arrival, and it seemed to me as if the angels were shouting, open the entrance, open the door. You have with us, what are you going to do here, will you crucify us now? And similar things. But the angels bound them and chased them before them. However, these souls knew little about Jesus, so he revealed himself to them, and they sang praises to him. Then the soul of the Lord turned to the right space, actually the pre-hell, and in front of him he met the soul of the good thief, accompanied by angels in Abraham's lap and the evil thief, who went to hell surrounded by evil spirits. The soul of Jesus addressed them, and then, accompanied by a company of angels, redeemed souls and cast out evil spirits, entered the lap of Abraham. That space seemed to me to be higher up, it was like going under the churchyard and then climbing out of the ground into the church. The bound evil spirits resisted and did not want to go inside, but the angels led them by force. Here were all the holy Israelites, on the left the patriarchs, then Moses, the judges, the kings, right the prophets and all Jesus' ancestors and their relatives, all the way to Joachim, Anna, Joseph, Zechariah, Elizabeth, and John. There, in that space, were no evil spirits and torments, only a longing for the promise, and it was now fulfilled. Unspeakable sweetness and bliss permeated all souls, who greeted the Redeemer and paid homage to him, and the chained evil spirits were compelled before them to confess their shame. Many of these souls were sent up to raise their bodies from their graves and to bear witness to the Lord. This was the hour when so many dead people rose from their graves in Jerusalem. They looked like wandering bodies to him, they laid down their bodies again in the ground, as a court messenger puts down his official cloak, after carrying out the orders of his superiors. Then I saw that the victorious procession of the Saviour penetrated again into a deeper realm, where in a kind of place of purification were pious Gentiles who had sensed the truth and longed for it. There were evil spirits among them, because they had images of idols with them, I saw evil spirits compelled to confess their deception, and I saw souls glorifying the Saviour with moving joy, and there the devils are chained and driven forward. I have seen the Redeemer, as a victor and deliverer, still pass quickly through many places where souls were imprisoned and do infinitely more, but in my miserable condition I cannot enumerate them all. Eventually I saw him approaching the center of the abyss with great seriousness, towards hell. It appeared to me in the form of an endlessly large, formidable, black rock building with a metallic sheen, 
at the entrance of which was a huge, formidable black door with latches and locks, which caused chills. Terrible screams and shouts were heard, the door opened, and a horrible dark world appeared. As I used to see the dwellings of the blessed in the form of the heavenly Jerusalem as one city, and according to the degree of bliss, as various castles and gardens full of miraculous fruits and flowers of certain kinds, here I saw everything in the form of one connected world, with different buildings, spaces and fields, but it all stemmed from the opposition to bliss, from suffering and torment, just as in the abode of the blessed everything seems shaped according to the reasons and occasions of infinite peace, eternal harmony and contentment, so here everything is in trouble of eternal wrath, disunity and duality. As in the sky unspeakably beautiful, transparent, various buildings of joy and reverence, so here also innumerable various dark dungeons and caves of torment, curse, despair, as the most wonderful gardens there are full of the fruits of divine refreshment, so here are the most horrible deserts and puddles full of torment and suffering, and all that can cause horror, disgust and horror. I saw temples, altars, castles, thrones, gardens, lakes, rivers, curses, hatreds, horrors, duality, troubles, sufferings and torments, as in a heaven of blessing, love, unity, joy and happiness. Here the tearing eternal discord of the accursed, as there the blessed communion of the saints. All the roots of wickedness and untruth were built here in innumerable appearances and deeds of suffering and torment, and nothing here was right, no thought soothing, only a serious thought of divine righteousness, that every accursed person receives torment and suffering sown for him by his guilt, for all this awfulness, which appeared and happened there, was the core and character and fury of the exposed sin, the serpent, which turns against those whom she nourished on her breast. I saw this one horrible building on pillars, arranged according to connection with horror and fear, as in the kingdom of God with peace and tranquility. This is all understandable, but unspeakable in detail. When the angels opened the door, there was a commotion of adversity, curses, curses, cries and moans. I saw Jesus speak to the soul of Judas. Some angels cast down whole companies of evil spirits. Everyone had to acknowledge Jesus and worship him, and that was their worst torment. A large crowd is chained in a circle around the others, who are thus imprisoned. In the middle was an abyss of darkness, Lucifer chained was thrown into it, and black steam was boiling around him. All of this happens under certain laws, I have heard, if I am not mistaken, that Lucifer fifty or sixty years before the year 2000 AD will be released again for a while. In our time, it seems to me, some devils have been released, and others will be after our time. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.